<clears throat> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and I'm discussing salt. My, I'm actually making a video about my salt lamps that I sell and that I own and I'm going to kind of incorporate feng shui as well, okay? Because I'm going to kind of talk about both and you don't have to be into feng shui just to own these. These are wonderful to have in your home regardless. But for those who would like to practice feng shui, I mean, I feel like everybody should because it really does make a big difference in your home and for your for your future and to kind of kind of, it, you know, there's a lot of things that feng shui, classical feng shui can promote the probability of something bad happening or something good happening. So I'm going to kind of talk about feng shui as well, because where you place these kind of things, in fact, anything that you have to, can make a huge difference and, you know, based, based on what it's made of. Okay. So I'm going to talk about well, first I'm gonna show you what you see here. Um, I have my two selenite lamps right here, and this one is 12 or 13 inches tall. This one weighs about 14 pounds. This one's a little heavy. Um, this one weighs about, I don't know, seven, eight pounds. Um, these are both carved selenite. These are all real, none of them are fake. This is my salt lamp, but I do have more lamps of these. I have lots of lamps. <laughs> This is my big salt lamp. I'm gonna talk about the salt salt lamp first. This one's about 10 inches and about, I would say maybe nine pounds. And this is my rose quartz lamp. And I'll turn them on in a minute, but it's it's pretty it's pretty good size. It's, it weighs about four pounds, maybe four and a half pounds. And my lightest one is my amethyst crystal lamp. This one's not too big, but it's genuine uh, pure crystal on top of a lamp. You could take the, the lamp light out which i'll show you later on the video so this is amethyst it's very pretty it's a point okay so um but what i want to do is i want to talk about the, the crystal lamps in general because i've had three people email me and say can can you talk more about those crystal lamps you have in your tarot reading video videos <laughs> when i read tarot and i'm i'm like i do have them in my videos a lot now but i i mean sometimes you can't really see them but i do have them near near um my readings a lot of times so not every single one of them but sometimes i have two or three sitting there because they are a real crystal and even if they're not on they still work like a real crystal does except they're just a lot bigger so it's even nicer the energy is stronger so this is really great so I'm going to talk about salt lamps first okay because salt lamps are very popular right now and the crystal lamps um, actually aren't as popular right now they should be they're they're both great there's you know but the salt lamp um, I'm going to talk about salt too because when you are a psychic reader slash spellcaster slash metaphysical uh, spiritual healer like a Reiki healer then we the salt and I'm not really talking about negative spells. I'm not one of those people that I, I do respect all kinds of spells and, and people that are whatever they want to be called or witches or these, you know, not, I don't think all Wiccan. I'm not against any of that. I mean, you could be a Christian or a Catholic or a Buddhist and, and whatever you are, I think everything's wonderful. But a lot of the people that do a lot of spiritual stuff, like psychic readings and spell casting, we know a lot about salt in general. So I'm, that's why I'm going to talk about the salt and along with the salt lamp. So if you know or don't know a lot about spells, um, salt in spell work is known to be used as very powerful protection as well as black salt. Okay, kind of like, um, for example, like sprinkling salt around the perimeters of your home. And when I say that, I mean after cleansing and saging your house, okay, because you don't want to use salt around your house if you did not cleanse or sage smudge inside of it first and yes some houses do require more cleansing like they might need a priest or they might need you know exorcism and and shamans and and other people stronger people to get rid of the negative spirit or what have you in the house so i understand it's not always that easy but in general you never want to sprinkle salt around anything until you know for sure that the inside has been cleansed really well because what you're doing when you use salt first you are locking in that negative energy or the negative spirit so salt cures are not the same you're not sprinkling them around your house you're putting them in different areas of your home during feng shui and again you don't have to be a feng shui and um person that you know that wants to get into if you're if you're wanting to learn or get into feng shui you don't have to um or even if you don't, you could still use a, a salt cure, okay? You don't have to do it just because of feng shui. That still helps 
draw away negative energy like crystals do and like salt lamps do okay so just just know that though do not sprinkle salt around your house okay unless you know it's cleansed really well from the inside okay so salt in general protects you from negative people it it protects you from negative spirits and salt is also known to absorb negative flying stars like i was just talking about when using classical feng shui okay and even if you don't use feng shui it still helps okay so we know that cleaning with a pinch of salt in your natural cleaning spray bottle for example can also help cleanse your house as well and when i'm talking about that not everybody does this, but another way to cleanse your house from the inside, what I do, I'm just gonna tell you what I do. It doesn't matter if you use Mr. Clean or Lysol. I use those two sometimes, but what I mainly do 99% of the time is I use, a, like I get like a big empty spray bottle and I fill it up almost halfway with uh, just distilled white vinegar. And then I might add um, some essential oils, like the well-known thieves oil that everybody uses for viruses and all kinds of things. I'm not selling, I don't sell essential oil and I'm not promoting thieves or young living, but that really is a really good one. And they also have a cleaner. I use that too, but I will also add besides water is a little pinch of salt. And the kind of salt that I only use is usually pink Himalayan or a uh, natural gray sea salt or Celtic sea salt. I don't use um, very cheap processed salt. And I'm going to throw this in here is that salt, I'm not a doctor, so blah, blah, blah. But in general, most real good doctors that actually care about healing or curing you versus a lot of doctors out there who just want to give you pills for every ailment that you have. And it's really not all their fault because that's really only what they're taught. But in general, real doctors will tell you that salt is not the enemy. It's the kind of salt that is. Okay, if you're eating processed salt, like table salt or cheap processed salt that has all the minerals cooked out of it, it's been bleached, it has fillers, I've heard it might have sand filler, like yes, sand, like from the beach, maybe not that kind of sand, but you know, sand filler or even glass filler. I'm not saying that's 100% true, but that's, you got to be careful because, you know, all the salt, whether that's true or not, the salt that is processed, it doesn't have any minerals in it, maybe like five of them, five little you know, and the iodine added to it is um, not really going to last in there unless because by the time you use some of it, just by opening it up, it oxidizes. So that iodine they add to a lot of salt is not enough because you're not and, and it's kind of a messed up thing that you're OK. Is that the only way we can get iodine besides sea vegetables and or going swimming in the ocean or taking Epsom salt? That because, you know, they have to add iodine. Think about that. Food used to be made with iodine until the government took iodine out, replaced it with bromine. If you don't know what bromine is, look up that because bromine works as it's kind of like it's kind of like a sister chemical of fluorine, of fluoride and chlorine, and it ruins your thyroid. That's so I'm wondering now these days, is bread really the enemy or is it the bromine in the bread that's the enemy? So maybe it's not gluten after all, maybe it's bromine. <laughs> Anyway, but just in general, that's why it's important. It's not salt. I mean, too much of anything can be bad. So of course, you know, don't just eat so much salt every day just because it's natural. But the natural salt has all of its minerals. That's why it works so well to cleanse your body and to give you those 80 plus minerals in them versus table salt that doesn't have any. Besides maybe a little bit of synthetic iodine which usually doesn't last in the canister anyway. So I'm just kind of giving you a little inf information there. Um, so just, you know, taking Epsom salt baths is known to help absorb heavy metals and other toxins. And, you know, using like natural Himalayan sea salt with, you know, when you cook is good. And it can also help restore, you know, adrenal fat, you know, fatigue. So there's just a lot of ways to use salt. So the reason that salt lamps are so popular right now is because they absorb water and particles from the air, like, and also toxins. Okay, so they attract things to its surface and then it removes them from the air. So, but, but the salt itself, kind of like the salt jar cures used in feng shui, they can help still absorb negative energy. And the warm glow that the salt lamp gives off when turned on 
can be soft on the eyes, okay? Because most modern devices like cell phones and laptops, etc., emit a lot of blue light and radiation, okay? That can, you know, really damage the eyes over time. That's why you hear people talk about wearing orange glasses or orange colored glasses when they're looking at their phones or computer screens now because it kind of helps uh, block the blue light the way that they're made. Um, another reason, um, that's another reason why salt lamps make really good night lights also, okay, or next to your bed, okay, because they also help improve air quality, okay, they attract, you know, pollutants in the air and help neutralize the negative effects of electronics, like I was just saying, okay, they are known to help with allergies, I don't really have any allergies, but kind of like they act like a mini filter, um, the bigger the salt lamp, the better, so I do sell, um, different sizes, so in feng shui though, okay, a salt lamp, can be used in certain areas where negative flying like your permanent stars are or the annual or the monthly star comes around in your home but turning them on can sometimes activate the negative stars at the same time and the reason applies to the fact that they are two elements in one okay meaning it's earth and fire Okay, meaning a Himalayan salt lamp or any salt is an earth element in general, okay, which if placed in any negative earth permanent or annual star areas during the year, and I'm talking about feng shui, okay, this can then activate the bad earth star. For example, the five and two. So turning them on makes them also become a more of a fire element and fire the element of fire and feng shui gives more power to the earth element stars. Okay, so if it's a number eight star, which is really good, then that's fine. But if you put it where the five star is or the two star is, wherever it is for the year, or if it's in your permanent sector of your home in a certain area, then that's going to activate the negative energy of that earth because it doesn't matter whether it's good earth element, like all these stones and crystal lamps are all good. But even if they're good, by just by putting them in an area where a bad earth negative star is, by putting a, an earth element of any kind, whether it's bad or good, still gives more power to the negative earth element of the star. So that's why it's important to be careful. If, I mean, if you wanna buy one of these and put it wherever you want and you don't do feng shui, that's fine because that's okay too. But if, but well, in my opinion, it's better to be careful because I know about, now that I know about feng shui for the past few years, I'm kind of like, well, I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> because once you know about it, you're kind of like, you, you just know. It's like something, when you discover something about something, you just kind of like, okay, now I won't ever do that again. Because you've, you, when you go back and look at the past of what happened and how your other houses were faced, or you know, you kind of go, that, that does make sense. That's why some of these things might've happened. I'm not saying it's, it's the cause of everything, but it promotes the probability of something good or something bad happening, okay? So you have to be careful, but the salt cures used in classic, you know, classic feng shui still helps absorb the negative energy, but the metal coins inside of them, and I made two uh, salt cure videos if you wanna watch them, they help to still suppress the earth element as well because they're made of metal, okay? Well, the I Ching coins, if they're made of real brass, okay, sometimes they're not. So, but you can use pennies or, or dimes or quarters, okay? So that is why a salt lamp is okay in certain areas, depending on your home's energy chart and annual stars, okay? So that's why salt lamps can still be placed, but not turned on, or you then will be kind of like activating the negative energy. So for those of you who want to improve your health, but the area near your bed has maybe a negative flying star there for the year or the month, it's best to maybe just place a salt cure jar next to your bedside table for the time being or the year because doing so will help still decrease your chances of illness and other issues. Or just placing a salt lamp is okay, just don't turn the lamp light on, okay? so. Now that we're done talking about the salt lamps, and if you would like to order salt lamps, um, my link is below, my website's below the description bar, and you can, um, I have maybe over five of them, five different kinds, so you can, try to find the plug. Which one turns, that's the other one. Let's turn on my selenite lamps. Here's one, actually this one doesn't have the light underneath. 
<laughs> that one doesn't have the light underneath, but I'll show you. It has an area where you can put it in, but if you choose not to, that's fine. This one's a little heavy. So this one you can, you, they're very easy to remove. Okay. So all the cords are, are UL approved. Okay. So selenite. Now in my, I don't know if for, for those of you who are new to my channel, I have a playlist about stones and crystals and I'm still have many stones and crystals to make videos about. I have not gotten a chance to um, make more videos about them, but this is kind of part of what I'll put in my playlist because these are real stones and crystals. They're just sitting on top of a lamp or are they're, or they're made into lamps. Okay. But I haven't yet made a video about selenite and I don't think so at least. Um, so selenite crystal is what you see here. The lamp that I just turned on. It's very, very beautiful. Um, I have two, you know, you see two selenite lamps here. I do have more. I do sell these, these ex exact lamps that you see. Um, I also sell this, uh, the taller selenite lamp you're seeing is about 12 to 13 inches tall. And it weighs, like I said earlier, about maybe 14 pounds. Um, the other one is about 10 inches tall. It weighs about maybe five pounds or four pounds. Um, and again, you can remove the cord under it. Okay. So I love these. I, you know, I really think these are the most, one of my favorite lamps of all the ones I have because it's just a pretty white glow that they give off and it's really nice. But you know, when I have one next to my bed during certain months, because I take it away during certain months, <laughs> Um, it actually, it actually gives a, a good amount of light as if you had like a very nice lamp shade there, like a regular table light, like small table lamp, but it, it's just a very pretty glow as you can see. Um, but it's not too strong like a regular lamp. Okay. So it's just, it's it, selenite in itself is a very gentle yet very powerful crystal. Okay. It's also very delicate because it can dissolve into water so it's very important um to never get selenite wet i mean if it gets wet uh, just a tiny bit just wipe it off um but it, it's very delicate stone it, it's a stone of protection though and it helps um it helps open the crown or higher chakras um selenite is also known to act as it, it act, kind of acts like as as like an eraser many healers and reiki healers and stuff they use selenite like the selenite wands and i do have some of those to sort of um erase negativity from people's body or your body okay it's like a it's kind of like a cleanser and purifier in one okay an eraser um some people believe that selenite is very powerful of keeping negative spirits away as well as illness too. Um, it's a very powerful, but at, at the same time, it's like so gentle. It's a very gentle stone. And it's also a crystal that cleanses, purifies others, other crystals too. So whatever, um, like you'll see some tarot readers sometimes use selenite wands when they're pointing out a card. I don't do that. I should use my wand, but... <laughs> <laughs> I cleanse my cards anyway, but you'll see a lot of times they'll use selenite wands when they're pointing something or touching a card sometimes because it helps keep any, um, it, it, it absorbs all energy. So it's not overpowering. Okay. Um, so again, it purifies other crystals. It's just a very all around universal crystal. Okay. Some people place, um, selenite you know near their bed to help them sleep like a baby or under their pillow um it's very calming and it's very it, it absorbs and it helps erase like negative thoughts and energy so so like the salt lamps um the selenite crystal lamps or my other crystal lamps are, are another example of earth elements okay and i'm going back to feng shui so during classical feng shui we like to often place crystals and stones in two areas, mainly during, um, like during the annual flying star areas where the number eight and sometimes where the number four is. Okay. Depending, depending on your home's permanent energy layout. Okay. Um, why the number eight? Because the eight, like I just said, is a good earth element star, meaning, um, well, it's good during period eight and it's period eight right now until period nine hits um, during the year 2024. So right now, wherever the annual star eight resides in your home, which actually is in the east this year. Okay, so placing these lamps made of crystal 
or salt lamps um, activates the positive earth elements because gemstones and crystals are also strong earth elements but if a bad star you know earth star like the two and five come into the area or if um, or if it's a permanent negative earth area of your home based on your home's trigram permanent chart then these crystals will activate those energies like I was talking about earlier okay even though the crystals do help repel negative energy because that's what crystals do or a lot of them do it's still best not to have them there you know in these areas because the worst for example the worst earth element five star resides in everyone south right now during 2017 until February. So if any of you have crystals or stones or salt lamps around your south area of your home, of your south, I don't know where it is, you'd have to take a compass reading inside your house, okay? Then you, if you have crystals there, you are activating the misfortune energy all year, which isn't so good at all, okay? So anyhow, so we're gonna go to, to I'm gonna talk about my other one is going to move the salt lamp. So we have our crystal lamps and we have my amethyst lamps. I'm going to turn those on. And you've seen these in my readings. I've had these in my videos. Okay. So I know you can only see the top, but here's the bottom. Okay. Isn't that pretty? There's, this one's a, a, a lot bigger. This one's fatter. It's more thicker, you know. Too bad the amethyst one. But again, they all come, they're all different. So they're not going to be the same. Okay, so these are real crystal again, and um, the crystal, the rose quartz and the amethyst, they're both about six to seven inches tall. But again, the rose quartz is a bit thicker, but not all of them will be the same. Like I said, each one is unique, okay? They weigh about four, maybe five pounds, depending on the size, okay? These both have a wooden base, unlike the selenite lamps, which have small little stands, okay? Um, Anyhow, so um, where was I going to talk about with feng shui? Okay, so the same rules apply if you are following feng shui, okay, um, with these with these kind of crystal lamps as well, okay? Um, now, I'm going to throw this in real quick. In real classical feng shui, you don't need Chinese items. You don't need any Chinese items. You don't need a sailing ship. You don't need a money frog. You can have them if you want, but you really don't need those. You don't need any Chinese items. Um, the only real items, the only real Chinese items that we do advise though, um, with certain things is um, the all metal six rod wind chimes. Those are useful, okay? If you have a Lu, a Lu Wu, those are okay because those are metal also. And the coins on the red string, those are the, the coins used if they're real metal like brass, that's okay. That's the only reason why it's okay to use, but you don't have to. A lot of people think they have to. You don't have to buy thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars of Chinese items to place in certain areas. You can if you feel like it, but you're really wasting your time. So, <laughs> Like I said, it's all about the real elements, okay? Like these lamps right here are all examples of earth elements to help activate the good earth star sectors. But other earth elements can be like not just crystals, but it could be like real ceramic decor or real ceramic items using like or using earth color decor like browns and soft yellows or real plants with real soil, you know, inside the pot that would be real earth elements. You don't have to buy, so in real feng shui, that's what you're doing. If you want to use metal to suppress the earth, you'd, real, you'd use or place something that is really made of metal. You would use like a metal lamp, or if your door is already made of metal, or if you have a, a metal iron gate, that would already be something metal. You wouldn't have to really do anything, depending on the other factors. But, or you could hide a big dumbbell under a couch. That or, or, or just decorate with a little bit more gray and white decor. You know, you don't have to paint your walls red, you, but you don't have to use any Chinese items. I'm just throwing that out there. And real feng shui masters will tell you the same. You don't need Chinese items. It's all about buying certain items made out of certain elements, okay? If you need water, what you would do in a certain area is you would maybe uh, have a bowl of water or you would just add some 
blue and black decker or bl or a blue mat or a blue rug or a blue not permanent cures but something you can move away like an area rug something that you can you're gonna laugh because i own a lot of area rugs because i change around the colors of my area rugs during certain years <laughs> I actually have done that. Um, I decided to just go ahead and just make everything white and kind of like a very, all my walls will always be white because if I do have to add something there, like a red object where the three is during a certain year or I need blue somewhere, then I will just add more decor items, but I don't have to really paint anything. My floors are always the same. So, you know, you can do it that way. I'll make another video on how to do all of that, but, um, I'm just telling you that you don't need Chinese items, okay? Um, you know, like I said, using earth colored decor like browns and soft yellows, etc. Um, you know, and by the way, like I said in my last video, I made my 2018 annual Feng Shui Flying Star download report that you can now order from me, okay? So the link will also be under my description bar, okay? Because it's probably good to know if you wanna know where all the stars are gonna be this year and what elements to place. And I actually give pictures of exact items that you can use, okay? So you're not wondering what kind of items can I use there, okay? So I'm, it's very, very helpful, okay? Now, I did already make a video on my am on amethyst, just like I did with the rose quartz. But um, and those two videos I will link down below. But for those of you who don't care about, you know, like I said, practicing feng shui, you can simply use these as you want because on their own, they're just really beautiful to have around the house. Okay, they do have healing properties, especially spiritually. And amethyst, this one right here, this is an amethyst point. Okay, these are carved. On the point okay um, amethyst just in a nutshell it heals emotional issues like nightmares anxiety insomnia psychic attacks it also balances the crown chakra it helps keep you very calm um, it helps to soothe and protect you it also helps to protect your aura okay it can also help with grief um, but it's also known to protect people who travel or travel overseas and with rose quartz um, rose quartz helps helps to promote romance, relationships, um, love, emotions, also grief, um, losses, a uh, self-love. It helps to help you make more friendships. It helps to restore peace. Um, both do very well. Okay, that's why I have a few of all of them. <laughs> it's known to heal a broken heart even. So overall, all these lamps do promote good energy. Okay, but in classical feng shui, because they are earth elements and sometimes their energy can feed too much into the negative earth element star energies okay so it's just important where you place them during certain months or during certain years depending on wherever the bad earth stars are okay so again if any of you would like to order any of my salt or crystal lamps i do offer free shipping and the link is down below and i'm um i guess we are done with this video for now and thank you um thank you all for listening to me today <laughs> and i will see you guys all in my next video